Have you ever been working on a project and midway through realized you didn't have the tool you needed to finish the job? Well, that happened to me. I was working on a project and midway through, I realized I didn't have centimeter graph paper. So I thought, okay, what am I going to do? I looked online and I could have purchased centimeter graph paper, but I'm like, I don't want to do that. And I found some educational sites that had free downloadable centimeter graph paper, but that graph paper didn't line up with the needs of my project. So I thought, I bet I could just create my own graph paper in PowerPoint. And I did. It was very straightforward, and I was able to print it out and get back to my project. I'm going to show you the steps for creating your own custom graph paper in PowerPoint. And then at the end, I'll show you how you can take those same steps and not only create different kinds of graph paper, but also planning pages, organizing tools, templates, and other tools you might need for your project. There are three steps for creating graph paper in PowerPoint. Number one, we want to adjust the PowerPoint page size to match our paper size. Number two, we'll create an outline square that is the size of the smallest unit of the grid of our graph paper. And number three, we're going to copy and paste that square to fill the slide. To adjust the PowerPoint page size, we're going to go up to the ribbon and choose the Design tab. With the Design tab chosen, we'll go all the way to the right where it says Slide Size, and we're going to choose Custom Slide Size. Now, it may be tempting to choose either 4x3 or 16x9, but those are aspect ratios for screens and not for paper. So we want to choose Custom Slide Size. When we do, a dialog box will open, allowing us to enter the exact dimensions of our page. Here in North America, we usually use eight and a half by 11 inch paper. So we'll enter those values here. In the width area, we'll type 8.5, click tab 11, and then click OK. Now, before PowerPoint changes our page size, it's going to ask us what we want to do with the existing content on our slide. For example, do we want to maximize it or shrink it to fit the new page size? Now, for us, we don't have any content on our slide yet, so it doesn't matter which one we choose. So we could just say eeny, meeny, miny, uh, maximize. And PowerPoint changes our page to match the new dimensions. So we can click, drag, and select those text placeholder boxes, hit delete, and now our PowerPoint page size is 8.5 by 11 inches. So now we know that whatever we create on our PowerPoint page will match perfectly on our paper when we print it out. Step number two, to create an outline square, we'll go back up to the ribbon and go to the Home tab. With the Home tab selected, we'll go to the Shape menu and choose the Rectangle Shape. Then on our page, we'll click and begin to drag out our shape. Hold down the Shift key on either a PC or a Mac to constrain the proportions of your shape to be a square. And then when you're done, simply let go of the mouse and you've created your square. But did you see the magic? Let's look again. When we created our shape, a new tab appeared in the ribbon that wasn't there before. It's the Shape Format tab, and it's what's known as a Contextual tab. A Contextual tab is a tab with a collection of tools that pertain to whatever object we have selected. In our case, we have a shape selected, so the Shape Format Contextual tab appears, giving us tools to use on our shape. Uh, it's sort of Microsoft's way of giving us in-the-moment help. Uh, contextual tabs are normally not visible, but they appear whenever you select a particular object. So be on the lookout for other contextual tabs that might appear. Uh, they'll appear not only for shapes, but for things like pictures and 3D models, charts or tables, zoom slides, videos, audio, or other objects. But for our purposes in the Shape Format tab, we want to go all the way to the right where we can see the current dimensions of our shape. And if we wanted to change those dimensions, we just have to change the values here. So for example, if I wanted a half inch by half inch square, in the height field, I'd type 0.5, hit tab. In the width field, I'd type 0.5 and hit tab. And now our shape is a half an inch by a half an inch. Now, I had said that I wanted to create centimeter graph paper, and the default units in my PowerPoint are inches. So how do I create a square that's one centimeter by one centimeter? Well, I could do math, and I'm not opposed to math because math is easy and fun. But check this out. 
So in the height field, I'm going to enter 1cm and hit tab. And what? What just happened? PowerPoint automatically converted one centimeter into its equivalent in inches for me. You can check the math. It's actually accurate. And it's kind of a cool thing. Here, let's do it again. 1cm. Now, I've had success using that trick uh, in PowerPoint on a PC and on a Mac, but I've had varied results when I've tried to do that same thing uh, in online PowerPoint. So give it a try. If it works, celebrate and dance and get excited. Uh, if not, uh, then just do a little math. No problem. But still, that's pretty cool. So now we have our square, which is one centimeter by one centimeter, but now we need to modify it so that it only has an outline. I'm using the blank default template that comes with PowerPoint. And when you create a shape in that template, the default formatting of that shape has an outline and a fill. And so for our purposes, we need to turn off that fill and just keep that outline so that we can have our outline shape. So to do that, we'll go up to the shape format tab. You can also do this from the home tab. Go over to the shape fill pull down menu and choose no fill. And now, we have our square that just has an outline on it, and it's one centimeter by one centimeter, which is the smallest unit of the grid of our graph paper. So we're done with step number two. For step number three, we're gonna copy and paste our square to fill the page. So first grab that square and move it up into one corner of your page. And there's several ways to copy this square, but the one I prefer is to hold down the control key on a PC or the command key on a Mac and drag out a duplicate square right next to the original one. So if we hold down the control key on a PC or command key on a Mac, click and drag, we're going to create a duplicate square right next to the first one. So now we have our two squares and we're going to continue that process across and down our slide to, to fill it with squares. Now what I like to do is I like to grab increasingly larger groupings of squares as I'm making duplicates to make things go faster. So since we've already created two squares, we'll select those, hold down the control key, then click and drag to create four squares. Now that we have four squares done, we'll select those, hold down the control key, click and drag to create eight squares and so on. We'll continue to do this as we move across the page and create our first row. And then we'll select all the boxes in the first row, hold down the control key and click and drag to create a second row and continue that down the page. And now we've copied and pasted the square to fill the slide. But there's one more step we need to do before we print our graph paper. Open up the PowerPoint print dialog box. To do this, hit control P on a PC or command P on a Mac. And when you do that, look for a pull down menu that says full page slides. Click on that and look for a setting that says scale to fit paper. Now, it might be checked in your version of PowerPoint, but we want to uncheck it because that's going to keep PowerPoint from stretching or squashing our graph paper. So when you print out your graph paper, those squares will be exactly one centimeter by one centimeter. So there you go. If you can adjust the PowerPoint page size to match your paper size, create an outlined square that's the size of the smallest unit of the grid of your graph paper, and then copy and paste that square to fill the slide, you can create your own custom graph paper in PowerPoint. But that's not all. You can use these same techniques to create all kinds of tools. For example, instead of having a blue outline on your square, change that color to be whatever you want and make rainbow graph paper. Have a dark purple outline and have the fill be a light purple and make purple graph paper. I used that basic technique, added a few lines, and I created engineering graph paper. And you don't just have to use squares. For example, create a hexagon, copy and paste that on your slide, and you now have hex graph paper for all of your Dungeons and Dragons mapping needs. Or create a triangle that faces to the left and a triangle that faces to the right put them together, copy and paste those, and you now have isometric graph paper. And you can also create things like blank calendars, planning pages, storyboard templates, and any tool that you need for your project. 
So get on out there, make some graph paper, and finish up your awesome project. Keep on clicking. Bye, boy, cowboy. Yeah.